Let us all be seated. <clears throat> Today is Tuesday of the first week of Lent. And we had emphasized the importance of the first step in the spiritual life, which is repentance. Repentance according to the New Testament, which is the perfection of repentance of the Old Testament. And so on Ash Wednesday, Holy Mother the Church reminded us that in order to acquire the virtue of penance, which is repentance, we must do three things. Pray, fast, and perform good works. And since Ash Wednesday up to today, the Mass and the liturgy has been explaining to us how to fast, how to perform good works, and in today's Gospel, how to pray. The most important lesson in fasting is the removal from our minds, our intellect, from all errors and heresies and mistakes. And to remove from our hearts all evil desires. Now to know <clears throat> which are the errors or the heresies in our minds and to know what is evil in our hearts, we have to check up what is the truth and what is evil from the teaching of Christ and as interpreted by the fathers of the church. We have to have a means of checking. We cannot just sit down and think what is in our minds or what is in our hearts. That is why it's so important to have this means of checking, a basis for checking, it should be scriptures and the fathers of the church. That is the important element of fasting. <clears throat> Next, good works. The important element in good works is that you perform good works towards those who are related to Christ, to those who obey the commandments of Christ, to those who are the mother, the brothers, and the sisters of Christ. And to the yesterday's Mass, enumerates six good works that you should master. <clears throat> we should not invent any new kinds of good works. Christ, in his teaching, has enumerated what are the good works. In summary, six of them but from the rule of St. Benedict, it was expounded to more than 70, but it is equivalent to six. And the most important element in good works is that you do it to those who are obeying the commandments of Christ. And how can you know what are the commandments of Christ and who are obeying them? 
again by checking it up from the Gospels and as interpreted by the fathers of the church. Having seen the important elements of fasting and good works, now let us look at the important element of prayer. Today, Christ tells us, you cannot pray any way you want. And the apostles precisely noticed that they did not know how to pray. And all of you must humbly admit and accept the fact that you do not know how to pray. Because only Christ can teach you how to pray. And in today's gospel, Christ tells us how to pray. And he recites to us the Our Father, <clears throat> a prayer that he himself has taught us. Notice that just as there are six good works, and you should know them in proper order, there are seven petitions in the Our Father, and you must know them also in their proper order. Do not interchange the order of the Our Father. And the reason for this is you cannot ask for the second petition unless you have first asked for the first petition and have received the first petition. So unless you have asked for the first, our Father who art in heaven, and unless God has given you that petition, making you the Son of the Father, you should not ask for the second, because Christ will not give you the second unless you have asked and received the first petition. And it goes down up to the seventh petition. Christ will not forgive you your sins, the seventh petition, unless you have asked for the first six petitions and unless you have received from Christ the six former petitions. And so St. Thomas of Aquinas continues and says, unless you have asked for all the seven petitions of the Our Father, and unless you have received the seven petitions of the Our Father, don't ask for anything else yet, because God will not give it to you. You must master this important lesson on how to pray. Today, there is a pestilence that's going on around the world. Very dangerous illness. Like the former times when God used to chastise the nations, he sends them earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and fires and oftentimes pestilence, illnesses that kills. And we have one right now 
around the world, killing people in a matter of days. It's worse than cancer. Cancer, you have weeks and months, even years. This new illness, it's only a virus, like a common cold or a common cough. But it kills for days, just for days. And, of course, the Catholic bishops are concerned. And so, what do they do? They command the whole world to recite the Oratio Imperata. That is a prayer to save us from this virus that kills the whole world. It's supposed to pray, not to be affected by this virus. She is commanding us to pray for a favor to be spared of this coronavirus. Wrong. You should not pray for that and God will never listen to your oratio imperata even if the whole world prays because you have not yet asked for the seven petitions of the Our Father. And because you have not asked and you have not yet received the seven petitions of the Our Father, God will not listen to your prayer to be spared of this dangerous virus. Why? Because we are not following the proper order in prayer. Just as there is a proper order in fasting, you fast first with the mind and then with the heart. There is a proper order for good works. First, Feed those who are obedient with the word of God before visiting them in the prisons. There is a proper order. You cannot change it. There is a proper order in praying to God. And the first step that is important in praying to God is that He becomes our Father. And when will God be our Father? Christ said so. If you obey my commands, who is my father? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? My sister. He who obeys my commands. So when we say our Father, we want God to be our Father. And when will God be our Father? When will God give us this first petition wherein we become our Father, only when we obey the commands of Christ. And so, before we pray the Oratio Imperata, asking for a favor that God spares us of this coronavirus that is now inflicted by God on the whole world in which people dies in a matter of days, that should be maybe 
the eighth petition, maybe the ninth petition, or the tenth petition, which God will never give us unless we have prayed for and received the first petition of the Our Father, which is Our Father, which God will only grant if we are obedient to the commands of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.